Rugged phones are becoming better in terms of specs because manufacturers are increasingly striving to make phones extremely durable and more powerful. In today's video, I'm going to show you everything you want to know about Duji S100, a premium looking phone which is based on a snappy Helio G99 chipset, generous 12GB of RAM and 256GB of storage, comprises 108 megapixels main camera and offers 10,800mAh fast charging battery which supports wireless charging. I'll give you a full tour and we'll test the real life usability of the phone, we'll test its camera's performance gaming performance and we'll talk through all the major aspects of the phone, so stay with me. But before we start, let's open that yellow box to check what's inside. And here we can find the S100 itself, instruction manual and warranty card, screen protectors and compliance certificates, a 65W fast charger with a dedicated USB-C cable. In terms of design and build quality, the S100 is designed to survive the most harsh and extreme environments. The phone can work between minus 55 to 70 Celsius or 77 to 158 Fahrenheit and is IP68 and IP69K military standard 810H compliant. The alloy frame is seen on the vertical sides of the handsets with four visible screws on each side. At the same time, it looks quite appealing to make an impression. But it's not just rubber and aluminium, the back of the phone has a leather coating which is unique and allows for wireless charging. The leather back adds a flair of elegance and timelessness. The construction is pretty heavy, this brick has 18mm of thickness and weighs 395 grams. The phone comes in three color options and we got here Ice Blue, Cyber Yellow and Classic Black, which is the model we're testing today. At the top and the bottom front side of the phone we can find a set of speakers. At the right side of the frame we got a volume rocker and a power button equipped with a fingerprint reader. The bottom has a USB-C socket for plugging the charger and the OTG devices and the infrared blaster. The left side has a customizable button and a hybrid dual nano SIM card and micro SD card slot. The SIM tray supports dual 4G SIM cards with dual standby and support for voice over LTE and voice over Wi-Fi which lets you make and receive voice calls, text and video calls over a Wi-Fi network instead of using mobile networks. On the back side we got a camera compartment and we will discuss and test the cameras later in this video. The S100 is equipped with a 6.58 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1080 by 2408 pixels with 20 by 9 aspect ratio and overall 70% of screen to body ratio and 120 Hz refresh rate. The display also allows to set the refresh rate at 60 Hz, 90 Hz or simply choose the automatic option. Screen has a 6mm thick top and bottom bezels and 2mm thick side ones. By the way, what you're seeing right now is the initial setup of the handset. It's a standard Android installation process, however, you got the option to enter your PIN number, set up your fingerprint reader and a facial recognition. There's a V-shaped notch for the front camera and the receiver. The display is fairly bright with just under 500 nits of brightness at its peaks, so in the real life the content on the screen is well visible outdoors. The screen is well protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 5. The camera compartment of the S100 features the main 108 pixels camera, 20 megapixels night vision camera and 16 megapixels ultra wide camera. There are also infrared emitters and the dual flash and torchlight. Let's do some tests. Here we got a few unedited photos in 108 megapixels resolution. The quality is fine, all the details are sharp thanks to Google imaging algorithms. Here, for comparison, the photos taken on Xiaomi 12T. The photos taken by S100 are more hazy than the ones taken by Xiaomi 12T. I'll leave it up to you to decide which ones look better. Now, let's test the zoom of the S100. And before we carry on, make sure you're subscribed. The S100 allows 4 times digital magnification, another comparison against Xiaomi 12T as both cameras having 108 megapixel sensors, however both are equipped with different lenses. Digital zoom enlarges the pixels in the center of the image, effectively magnifying the subject by cropping the edges of the frame. This results in a loss of resolution and quality as the camera is essentially stretching the existing pixels to fill the frame. 
Now let's test the night vision photos and videos taken by S100. Infrared night vision cameras work by emitting a beam of infrared light using an infrared illuminator. The emitted infrared light isn't visible to the human eye, but it behaves same way as visible light, that's why we can see the shadows behind the object, just like in normal light conditions. Now, let's check the video capturing capabilities. The S100 captures the video in 2K HDR and that's 2560 by 1440 pixels and 30 frames per second. And there's basically no image stabilization, so the captured material is pretty wobbly. In my opinion, the S100 would certainly benefit having the image stabilization built in. Tell me what you think in the comments below. The 32 megapixel Sony front camera sensor supports facial recognition and unlock. Here are some quick examples of the photos taken by the front camera. The camera app offers most features we've seen in other Android phones. On the inside, the S100 is powered by the MediaTek Helio G99 chipset, manufactured using TSMC's 6 nanometers process technology and Mali G57 GPU that handles the graphics. The S of the phone's specification is a generous 12 GB of RAM with 256 GB of UFS 2.2 onboard storage, expandable up to 1 TB with an external micro SD card, which can be inserted into the SIM tray. Our Doji S100 scored nearly 388,000 points on the Antutu 9, which beats the Unihead Tang by 8,000 points and the Samsung Galaxy A52 by a fraction of the points. Moreover, in terms of Antutu results, the Helio G99 on the S100 is clearly positioned among the smartphones based on the Snapdragon 845 and Snapdragon 750 chipsets. In the Geekbench multicore, it beats the Ukitel WP19, which I reviewed last summer, but it's just under the Unihead tank, which I will show you in one of our next videos. All this makes the S100 a pretty solid machine for occasional gamers, including myself, and I tried some of the popular games. First, the Asphalt 9 Legend, probably one of the best racing games ever made on the Android platforms. All looks fab, despite the high graphic settings, no lags or reduced FPS, all smooth as a butter. Next, Call of Duty Mobile. The graphic settings been set to medium and the frame rate to high. As you can see, everything is smooth, despite hectic situations in the game. All works fine. Another popular title which demands increased processing power, PUBG. Using the medium graphic settings, I can't complain. All works fine, no lags, the graphics looks okay and the phone doesn't overheat. And finally, this is the most hungry for processing power game. Many of you already know what I'm talking about. It's Genshin Impact. This game will run on low graphics settings. It doesn't look very bad, but it's a low resolution with ugly vittering and I can almost see every pixel. The S100 runs on stock Google Android 12 with very minor tweaks from Doogee. There's a very basic set of pre-installed applications on the phone. A phone, clock, contacts, messenger and a whole bunch of Google apps. There's also a very useful toolbox pre-installed. This app includes many practical features including compass, pick hanging, height measure, torch, pedometer, etc. Useful not around the construction works but also around the house. By the way, the phone also supports NFC, which means secure and contactless payments, and as mentioned earlier, it has a fingerprint reader and face recognition feature. The S100 is Widevine L3 compliant, which means you're capped at sub-HD resolutions only. When watching Netflix, Amazon Prime or Google, in practice the S100 doesn't allow to watch HD content on paid services. YouTube, however, is available in maximum of 2K resolution. 
The phone has a 10,800 lithium ion battery which can be recharged using the included 66 watts fast charger. And as mentioned at the beginning, it also supports 15 watts wireless charging thanks to its construction. These are the results from the battery charging test. The full charge takes around an hour and 20 minutes, which is very fast considering it's a huge battery. The fast charging increases the phone's temperature up to around 40 to 50 Celsius, which is around 104 to 122 Fahrenheit. And that's pretty normal when using the fast charging, regardless the phone we use. These photos are taken by a thermal camera showing the increased temperature during the charging. Personally, I think the S100 is a good rugged smartphone worth getting in 2023. It has a pretty good specifications in comparison to other rugged phones currently available in terms of the screen, cameras and even the battery. This phone certainly will not disappoint you at this price range. Okay guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that video and found it pretty informative and useful. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you won't miss when the next video comes out.